Welcome back to version 2 of my filament dry box project where I'm going to answer a few of your questions and where I'm going to talk about the changes I made to this project to make it a much better solution. So in the last video where I've shown you how to build a filament dry box yourself by just using some printed parts, some bearings and some additional screws, this project went actually pretty well, but you had some questions and also some suggestions for improvement. So let's talk about the changes I made to make this a better version. So the first question you asked me was, why are you drilling such a huge hole for the humidity sensor? Why are you not just placing it inside of the box? Because this is a transparent box, obviously. So you could actually read the value from the humidity sensor through the outside of the box. And that is absolutely right. So it is not really required to drill a hole for the sensor. You can also add uh, some holding piece at the inside of the box to make it stay in place here at the top. You can just also just put it inside of the box and read it from the outside. You can use some tape. There is different solutions. Another question of you was what value did it settle uh, after a few hours because I didn't include that in the last video. So the value that it settled down on was 17% humidity inside of the box, which I think is a great result. So that shows that the box is really tight and uh, sealed and that value stayed for a few days. So it didn't change. And after a few days, I decided to do some changes because I printed from the box and I saw some issues. So the first issue I had is where I placed the original filament outlets. So I placed the original outlets here at the top and because of the like form of the box, especially this cavity here, it caused me to place these outlets a little bit more to the inside, so closer together and not perfectly aligned with the middle of the three spools. So I had to place, especially the outer two ones, a little more to the inside and that caused these spools to wobble quite a lot around because there was some force pulling these spools a little bit to the side. So uh, they were almost tipping over. That in the first place wasn't a good choice. So placing them more to the outside would have been a solution. Another thing that I saw, and that was also a question from you, why didn't you place the outlets to the bottom because that would cause less problems with the spools tipping and also causing the spools easier to run on the spool holders. So that's also a reason why I moved these uh, outlets to the bottom. And another change I did, I replaced these original filament dust filter versions of the outlets with simple PTFE couplings. The reason is that these filament dust filters are causing additional friction and I can also place them further apart because they are just smaller and because of the design of this box it still has this corner here and you can just put these closer to the edges. Another change I made was to the original spool holders. So if you look at the spool holders they are pretty flat here at the bottom so from the top you don't see that but if you put these uh, especially this, this combination of three spool holders. If you have this sitting on the silica gel, which is going to be at the bottom of this box, over time these are going to move themselves a little bit more into the silica gel surface. And that may cause some problems because the spool is sitting here on the spool holder and especially this gap here is very narrow and that could cause the edge of the spool to touch the surface of the silica gel and then causing additional friction. So I wanted the spool holders to sit higher above the silica gel and especially not sitting on top of the silica gel but more sitting on the bottom of this box. So I decided to change the design of this part and I've made it higher. So this now is two centimeters higher. So the point about this change is I'm going to put this spool holder into the box first and then I'm going to fill in silica gel. So it's not going to sit on top of the silica gel but it's going to sit on the bottom of the box being more stable and not moving around. And then there is the spool holder that I also had to change for a few reasons. First of all, the spool wouldn't turn as easy as I wanted it to turn. And there's one reason that I overlooked in the first design. These 
bearings that I bought for the original design were not turning as easy as I expected. So these are actually uh, RC and there is another version that's called ZZ and the 608 ZZ bearings are turning much easier. And I also changed the diameter of these inner sticks here where the spool is going to run on. So a, a bigger diameter also means the spool can turn that easier. And additionally, I added some tape uh, to the outer edges of the spool roller. So with the additional tape on the edges of the rollers, this works so much better. And now it's a really, really good solution. I've tried to add tape to the original thinner of rollers, but that didn't work as good. So the combination of having the faster bearings with the higher diameter inner part and additional tape, that is definitely the best way to do this. So let's finally assemble this new version and have a look at the final result. So this was version two of my filament dry box project. I hope you liked this video and if so, give it a like and consider building one because I'm going to use this daily now because it's such an improvement over version one. But if you remember, I told you at the beginning of this video that I have a surprise and this surprise is going to be for the people who are watching this in the first 48 hours of this video going live. So everyone who subscribed and hit the bell notification will get this notification. You can win one of five filament dry box kits and each kit contains one kilogram of silica gel, 12 bearings that you will need, also three PTV couplings and a humidity sensor. The kit is going to contain all these hardware parts and the 3D printed parts you have to do yourself. You can use PETG, you can use PLA, and I'm also linking my collection of 3D printable parts for this project in the description box of this video. So to get one of these, add a comment to this video and tell me the country where you are from. So after the first 48 hours of this video going live, I'm drawing those five winners. So good luck and hope you like this video. If so, maybe you want to watch one of the two other ones I've linked up here for you and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye!